You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. This is The Conscious Caregiver with author and elder care coach, Carol Ann Hamilton. Caring for uncopable aging parents, feeling stressed to the max, then you've come to the right place. Let Carol Ann restore some serenity by giving you concrete and sound solutions for challenging and aging parents. So now, please welcome the host of The Conscious Caregiver, Carol Ann Hamilton. A moving welcome to all of you. And I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And isn't that great that there are more places than ever before where you can access this information? And all of you who tune in regularly, as well as download the broadcasts, know that this is the place where you get grounded and unique solutions that combine the practical and emotional aspects of how to successfully navigate the elder care marathon in a fashion that is unlike the typical content out there. And I wonder, do you know anyone who is in an informal, i.e. unpaid, caregiver situation with their spouse or partner? Are you in such a relationship yourself? Either way, you are not alone. I just need to reach for statistics that I researched in preparation for today's broadcast. And these come from the Family Caregiver Alliance National Center on Caregiving. And it talks to several statistics. For example, about 34.2 million Americans have provided uncare unpaid care to an adult aged 50 or older in the last 12 months. This is a combination of that National Alliance plus AARP statistics. At $470 billion in 2013, a bunch of years ago by now, the value of unpaid caregiving exceeded the value of paid home care and total Medicaid spending in the same year and nearly matched the value of the sales of the world's largest company, Walmart, at $477 billion. Can you imagine that? I thought that was just a stunning statistic to include from the AARP Public Policy Institute. And then we go on from there. Upwards of 75% of all caregivers are female and may spend as much as 50% more time providing care than males. This comes from the Institute on Aging in 2016. And then I flip ahead. Oh, yes, right. And among spousal caregivers aged 75 plus, both sexes provide equal amounts of care. And this was a comparison study of informal caregiving by black and white older adults in a community population. So, you know what? All of that tells me I have people in my circles who are female and male who provide such informal caregiving. But I hope that the statistics hit you between the eyes because this situation is only going to get worse rather than better in coming years. And I'm going to start with my dad today. 
because my father sure fell into more than one of these categories, as my mother manifested one problem after another for the last 10 years of her life. And those included two hip replacements, arthritis, because she refused to do her walking exercises. Uh, we also encompass massive dental procedures and bladder struggles, cataracts, and plenty others. And my folks were cast in a traditional marriage where the wife is supposed to, quote unquote, look after the husband, as did also my grandmother for my dad, where he was the family baby when he only moved out of the parental home at the age of 34 upon wedding. I'm sure he would have stayed there longer had he not married my mom. And you can accurately picture how resentful he was about her care because, yeah, that's just the way the man rolled. Though, I must give him credit for organizing her pill chart better than a battle general's campaign, and he certainly did see through his vow until death do us part. Indeed, my dad pined way more than I upon my mom's passing at the time. Now, I will tell you that since then, my attitude has changed, and that's a good thing. Still, even the parental role model does not get at the heart of what I feel compelled out of truthfulness to declare with you today, because we do not ride the surface around here and instead go by the imperative of transparency. And that brings us to the part I am a little bit squishy about, to be perfectly honest, because in some ways it means being ever more outwardly vulnerable than even a few weeks ago when I shared what I felt like were a bunch of skeletons in my closet to do with selling the parental home. Today's show on a spousal caregiving journey strikes even closer. For sure, I know more than one couple who was or is on such a journey, and I am perfectly comfortable supporting those folks emotionally. But then I must turn to my own situation. And this comes from a forward-looking friend who challenges me even often before I'm ready to tackle subjects. But she said, I ought to really widen my definition of this broadcast audience to also include those who provide care to the one they live with. And that that's you, Carolyn. Yikes. She was right. Though I don't want to even fully admit it now, I can be located within those statistics as my own husband of 35 years manifests ever-mounting ailments in the form of heart disease, diabetes, breathing, and back issues. And this is a general decline that took an exponential turn in early 2004 when his health forced early retirement from the workforce at precisely the same time I was striving to establish my entrepreneurship after 25 years of employed life. And you know what? To completely allow in these realities would mean acknowledging the daily physical, emotional, mental, and energy tolls. Even apparently simple things take on me, like grocery shopping trips together, plus seeing him off to medical appointments. He had two just yesterday because he is obviously far too stubborn for me to accompany him on the ladder. And it would also mean facing how internally strong I must be or perhaps demand of myself to be as I witness his progressive downward slope. And I wonder where it'll all lead. Meanwhile, carrying on with my work in the world plus other pursuits. Many of you know that when we downsized three years ago into a condo unit half the size of our 22-year lived-in house... That was because it was becoming too much for me to basically manage on my own. And I will tell you to this day, that transition really smarted because it meant admitting I am not superwoman after all. And it reminded my husband that I initiated this major step because he was not coping and would never concede to the facts at hand, if anything. He resisted me every step of the way, which, suffice it to say, did not help. In the process of sifting and sorting 84 years of accumulation, it combined 34 of ours plus 50 of my parents who had passed away, you can imagine I had to let go of, actually and figuratively, a lot of things, but I am proud of my decisions over what to keep, and photos were a key category. 
because one of my favorite projects at the time involved placing into a 16 square frame the best of the best picture memories of us across the years, but, uh, but it was hard at the time. So we're just going to pause there before we bring on our guest, and I want you to know I'm Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver, and we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. Stay tuned, everyone. Introducing BetterHomeAndGarden.com. That's www.betterhomeandgarden.com with just the letter N in Better Home and Garden. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the highest quality products on the market that are environmentally safe and effective and to make them available to you at the lowest possible prices. Betterhomeandgarden.com understands that kind of creativity and do-it-yourself attitude. Thus, we developed our website, betterhomeandgarden.com. Betterhomeandgarden.com offers you the following products right online. Bath, bedding, collectibles, craft, sewing and hobby, food and beverage, furniture, home decor, kitchen and dining, lamps and lighting, large appliances, musical instruments, outdoor cooking, patio items, pet supplies, plant and garden, rug and floor coverings, small appliances, travel and luggage, and so much more. Better Home and Garden is an online retailer offering a wide variety of high-quality brand name merchandise at discount prices. Our service is personal and we aim to please. Visit us at www.betterhomeandgarden.com. Make your home your own. Do you ever wonder why certain things are happening in your life? How to start a business or a new direction? Need answers? Astrologer Bonnie Perbula can help you reveal your true self and gain strength and focus so you can achieve greater joy and success. Working with a natal birth date, time, and location, Bonnie brings out qualities to aid you in getting the best from your life. She can help you unlock dormant traits to bring you greater awareness. Bonnie also conducts public speaking engagements to educate aspiring astrologers on their journey to the stars. A gifted artist, Bonnie bridges her talents and recently launched a line of Astro Bears, uniquely created in colors of individuals' astrology charts. She also makes one-of-a-kind necklaces of crystal beads and woven thread. To learn more about the world of Bonnie Prabula, go to BonnieGPrabula.com. And for astrology consulting, visit AstrologyConsultants.com or call or email her at 808-526-1536 or BonnieGP at AOL.com. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and today's theme really has to do with a spousal caregiving journey. And just before that, we pause. I was sharing how meaningful it was to assemble a set of photographs that remind me early images of how vital my husband used to be, which is not always the case today. And I will say that sadness and regret definitely are feelings which arise. Um, Now, there are undoubtedly many elements within within which I just shared that our guest can also empathize with because she had her own protracted spousal caregiving journey. And if you think that mine or my dad's situations were challenging, then I will say, wait until you hear hers, because I sure was down dumbfounded as we prepared behind the scenes. And so I am really glad that after a little debate back and forth, we netted to where we did, because we have not tackled head on this specific theme, and yet it is so critical in its own right. Um, I already know right now that Andrea's insights will value add tremendously on what turns out to be our 60th broadcast. And so I think that's perfect to have her on for this milestone. So let me please introduce Dr. Andrea Taylor. And she is the principal and owner of Woman's Encore, a life coaching practice focused solely on mature women who are experiencing significant significant life transitions, such as caregiving, divorce, retirement, career change, empty nest, or any of the issues that are relevant to women at this stage of life. In fact, transitions are uh, important in life at any age, but as we get older, the ways in which society views us as older women can add to the challenges we face as we navigate change. And Dr. Taylor holds a master's degree in urban education and a PhD in sociology. As a mature woman herself, 
But I'm thinking much younger, you know, in spirit than necessarily her chronological age. She has over 40 years experience as an educator, facilitator and life coach. Andrea is enjoying the richness and joy of her encore years and does want to share that with others. So we will encompass those themes and more today. So welcome to the Conscious Caregiver Show, Andrea, and thank you for taking the time to be with us today. Thank you so much for having me. It's absolutely a pleasure to be with you. And I just want to say that um, over the summer, I did a walking trip in the U.K., with two other women who are actually a little bit younger than I am, and we walked 85 miles from Exeter to Dartmoor, which is on the seacoast of uh, England. So it's never too late to uh, do the kinds of things that you think you can't do at this age. So I'm almost 74, so I really appreciate the fact that I have the energy to do that. Um, and wow. just a little bit. Of, yes, I, I came back in really good shape. So, just a little bit about Women's Encore. Um, I worked for a number of years at Temple University's Intergenerational Center, and among other things, we had a project called Coming of Age, where we really looked at kind of what's the, the what's next question in terms of people and their, you know, their second act or the third stage or whatever you might want to call it, and. Um, We really helped people decide what they wanted to do with this next career phase. And that was kind of how I developed Woman's Encore as I went into my own consulting years. And so what I do is I really help women, as we said in the introduction, think about, um, you know, what they want to do with this time. But I find that people get into these kind of circular arguments with themselves, and I call it the merry-go-round dilemma. You know, it's what shall I do, what shall I do, what shall I do? And I really help people kind of jump off the merry-go-round and be able to make a decision so that they can move forward with the plan. And that's really what Women's Encore is focused on. And I had written my doctoral dissertation on women who divorced in late life. And at the time I did the study, uh, there was really nobody that had done any work on that particular topic. And I had been divorced myself, although at a much younger age. And so a lot of the the women that come to see me for life coaching are kind of going through this decision about, you know, should I stay or should I go? And I really enjoy working. uh, I mean, I like all people, but I really enjoy working with mature women. It's just a, a very rewarding group of people to work with. And, of course, also many of my clients are caregivers. And I, I find that, you know, I have a lot to offer and a lot of problem solving that we can do together. So it's a, you know, it's a very rewarding practice. It surely is, Andrea, and I'm thinking about one of the Facebook comments that came through yesterday while we were promoting the show, and this person said she's a fantastic life coach, and I just know from our interactions and our preparations that that is absolutely the case, yet because you deal with women where it includes caregiving experiences, um, you know, right later in life, I know you've also had your own caregiving challenges Mm -hmm. along the way, and I'm sure that our audience would like to hear something about what you encountered, because it's quite the story. Yes, it is. So I was, so I mentioned that I was divorced, and I uh, was divorced when my son was very small and was single for uh, about 12 years, and I remarried, and about a year after um, I remarried, my husband, um, with very, very little warning, was diagnosed with uh, primary progressive MS. And so only 10% of the population of people who have multiple sclerosis actually have the primary progressive form of the disease. And he had the most aggressive form of the primary progressive um, MS. And so very quickly, um, I became a caregiver. And I was working full time. And when I was listening to your introduction about, you know, the kind of multiple responsibilities. So I was working full time. I was traveling a great deal for my work. Um, I was managing a household and I was taking care of him. And so I um, took care of him at home by myself for probably about 15 years. Um, I took care of him. We were married for 26 years before he passed away, and I took care of him full-time by myself for probably 15 of those years. Mm -hmm. And then for the last five years, I brought in outside help. And then finally, for uh, six years, he was actually in an institution. I had to move him to a nursing home. 
so it was really, um, you know, and watching him ultimately be able to do nothing for himself. I mean, he couldn't scratch his own nose, he couldn't feed himself, couldn't dress himself, could do nothing. So it was it was a very distressing situation, very difficult. It was extremely challenging. And let's just yes. let everybody breathe on that note, Andrea. We'll come mm-hmm. back in a couple of minutes. And everyone, you're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. Hello, I'm Steve Fagan, and I'm president and CEO of Fagan Associates, but I'm also a life coach. I'm here to help you reach your dreams, goals, and objectives. As a life coach, it's my job to be your support, to be your teammate, to help you understand what is your dream, what is your life passion, and then together we work as that team to help you reach your specific goals. Life is worth living the best you can be. Working with a life coach, you're fulfilling those dreams and goals is your passion, and it's your way of living. Let me help you do that today. Let me help you really reach the best that you can be as a person and live the life you should be living. I'm Steve Fagan. I'm a life coach, and I'm here for you. Contact Steve Fagan at FaganAssociatesInc.com or call 1-800-239-2701. And I'll be glad to help you move forward to live the life of success. Reach your dreams, your goals, your objectives. We can do it together. Patricia Fayweather Harlow is passionate about the environment and conserving our natural resources. She's written a five-part book series for all ages called Rock with Rodney and Party with Perky to Preserve Wildlife, which brings awareness through these vibrant characters on preserving and protecting our national parks and historic landmarks. Harlow has launched a campaign to mobilize green supporters, informing a united front against big oil, big coal, and the Keystone XL pipeline. And she addresses the controversial practice of fracking in books four and five. She's determined to bring greater awareness to the dangers of drilling and running crude oil through pipelines that cut through pristine landscapes. And she empowers readers to take action in keeping America beautiful. To learn more about Patricia Fayweather Harlow and to purchase her books, visit www.patricia-fayweather-harlow.com. That's F-A-Y-E-R-W-E-A-T-H-E-R. And play your part in preserving the landscape that we all share and love. So glad you're with us for our vital and poignant topic today. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and you are listening to The Conscious Caregiver. We are sharing today with Dr. Andrea Taylor, and she is the principal and owner of Women's Encore, which is a life coaching practice focused on solely mature women who are experiencing significant life transitions. And of course, representative examples are caregiving, divorce, retirement, career change, and empty nest, plus a whole bunch more. And our poignant topic is a spousal caregiving journey. So just before that pause, Andrea, you were talking about your situation with your husband, and I know you want to relay some more challenges with us so that our listeners are educated and illuminated. So let's pick just right back up from there. I think there are two major challenges that I want to share. One is the whole concept of when do you need to get outside help? So I was convinced that I could provide complete care for my husband by myself, and it was that uh, transition, and I needed a therapist actually to help me figure out when I really couldn't do that. So that's one thing I want people to be aware of. The other thing was that my husband had been a very – physically fit uh, the original mountain man and helping him make the transitions from when did he need a cane, when did he need a walker, when did he need a wheelchair, when did he need a power chair, all of those transitions were really difficult. And the hardest one, of course, was when I finally had to make the move to a nursing home, which I have to say was the most excruciating decision that I've ever had to make. So I just want to kind of share that. Um, And then I also wanted to, one of the questions that you had asked me to think about was what were the attitudes and mindsets that I could share with listeners to kind of help them as they were navigating? And Mm -hmm. I have a list that I'd like to share that I with with listeners. Very Um, good. Yes. So one of them is about changing the narrative in your head. And I, I had a wonderful coach 
uh, when I was going through this process. And so she said to me, she said, the narrative that you have in your head right now is that you were the lone warrior and you're standing on the mountaintop with your rusty sword and your shield and you're trying to do everything by yourself. And she said, I would suggest to you that you think of yourself as the coordinator of a jazz ensemble. And, you know, think of all the different musicians who are playing the different instruments and you are out there and you are pointing to, you know, the team of, um, I don't know, on, uh, porn players. And, you know, you point to them and you get them moving in with a certain rhythm. And then you point to another group of musicians and you get them moving with a certain rhythm. You can't do everything yourself and you have to figure out who's out there and who can help you. And when I started thinking about, you know, coordinating my husband's care with that kind of picture in mind, I have to say it was incredibly helpful. So that would be one thing that I would really offer as a way of kind of thinking of this whole process. So another thing that I would also offer up is really being present. And sometimes we're so focused on what the plan is. You know, well, I'm going to do this next and I'm going to do this next. And very often all our loved ones want is for us to be with them. You know, sit down and read a book or sit down and watch TV with me. And that's a really important thing. And I discovered that after my husband passed away and I was feeling a lot of guilt about, you know, I was so busy making a plan that sometimes I wasn't just available. So being present is something I would really highly recommend and support. And the, the next one is cultivating trust between you and your partner and just kind of um, allowing the fact that you need to trust them and they need to trust you to know that things will get done. Um, the next one I would recommend is adjusting your expectations. It's like you can't do everything in a day. You can only do what you can do, and you can do it to the best of your ability, and nothing is ever going to be perfect. Um, practicing self-care, which I think everybody knows about, but not everybody does, and mm -hmm. it means you have to take that yoga class or you know, sit down and do a bubble bath or you know, make sure that you eat properly or, you know, I mean, the, the metaphor that people always gave me, which I have to say I hated, but is really important, is, you know, when you're on a plane and they tell you with the oxygen mask comes down, you have to put yours on first. But it's true. You really do. You have to take care of yourself. And love, uncondition love unconditionally and accept your anger. And those things kind of go hand in hand because you get it, you do get angry. You know, you get resentful at the fact that your life has been turned upside down and it's not how you planned it. Um, and then you also, just like you would a child that you're raising, it's like, boy, I hate you sometimes, but I really do love you. And you just have to keep, you have to hold those two things in your heart simultaneously. So that's, that's kind of what I would offer in terms of the mindset piece. Boy, that's a that's a whole lot right there, Andrea. And I can tell and feel and hear that you have really thought about this. And how would you distill all of that experience, lived experience, into this set of suggestions for us? Uh, I I really appreciated. You're even sharing about the feelings because many that I work with in a coaching and workshop context struggle with the anger, the resentment, the frustration, and they feel somehow, especially women, that they are not allowed to convey that. And I think you have reminded our, us of how important that is. You know, funny enough that I was just at a workshop on the weekend about death and dying, and uh, one of the quotations that was used was, that really the caregiving journey can constitute amongst the most significant personal growth lessons of our lives. And I'm sure you've discovered that too. Uh, I think it was Stephen Jobs even that said it likened the, the journey to a change plan, like life change, right? And there's nothing like going through the experience to come out the other side with a ton of life lessons. And as coaches, we both know how important that is. You've talked about how transformative were your insights when you were 
you know, studying to certify with your own coach and how Mm -hmm. many of the circumstances you once defined as uh, challenging became kind of like a backdrop where you were learning to cultivate Mm -hmm. different experiences. And I think that that's what you're saying really about reframing. So we're encouraging today that others going through these these situations will open themselves up ultimately to new opportunities. In any case, we just need to take a pause. So stand by everyone. And we're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting and Spotify. And I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. You're listening to The Conscious Caregiver. Dr. R.C. will share extraordinary resources and services that promote educational success as well as making a difference in the lives of all social workers as well as the lives of children, adolescents, and teens of today. She will have open discussions addressing many of the issues that we face about our youth and how being employed in the uniquely skilled profession of social work for over 18 years has taught invaluable lessons through her personal experiences. She will also provide real-life facts, examples, and personal stories that will confirm that why serving as a child advocate is extremely beneficial when addressing the needs of the whole child. Listen live Saturdays, 10 a.m. Eastern on the BBM Global Network and tune in radio as Dr. R.C. will provide thought-provoking information that will empower, encourage, and strengthen students, families, and communities across our nation. You can also visit her at soarwithkatie.com. According to the American Nurses Association, there are approximately three and a half to four million nurses in the United States. So where do all these nurses work? What kind of roles do they have? What kind of education and training help to prepare them for so many different settings? What kind of impact do nurses have on patient outcomes? The World Health Organization has announced that 2020 will be the year of the nurse, honoring the 200th birth anniversary of Florence Nightingale, an international initiative called Nurse Nursing Now is underway to raise the profile of nursing. The National Academy of Medicine has convened a committee to create the future of nursing 2020 to 2030 that will focus on how the nursing profession can create a culture of health, reduce health disparities, and improve the health and well-being of the U.S. population. Learn more and join Joyce Batchelor on All About Nursing, Wednesdays from 7 to 8 p.m. Central Standard Time on the BBM Global Network. Thank you, everyone, for staying with us today. And this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and we're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And we're connecting today with Dr. Andrea Taylor, uh, where her life coaching practice, Woman's Encore, focuses on the significant life transitions that mature women experience, especially since the way society views older women can add to the challenges they face while navigating change. And in fact, we're talking about a very important topic called a spousal caregiving journey. And this is one of the transitions that can happen during this chapter of life. So I remind everyone that what we're saying today can apply to both you and or someone you know. It could actually even include the male caregivers that I know, Andrea. So there are some of those too. But either way, let's pay heed because you have been so gracious in sharing during that last segment a number of attitudes and mindsets that can really help listeners who are navigating a spousal and or partnered caregiving journey. And I know you've learned some real lessons about practical strategies to suggest as well. So let's go there next. Take it over, Andrea. Okay, thank you. So this is a list that is kind of in no particular order, actually, but again, it's uh, lessons that I learned uh, very much the hard way, and I think I will start with um, understanding the financial landscape. So as many of your listeners are probably very well aware, um, one of the things that is not well covered in this country is long-term <laughs> care uh, for people with, particularly with chronic illnesses, and uh, in our case, uh, we had to pay for everything out of pocket um, in terms of care. So 
once I was no longer able to provide all of my husband's care by myself, uh, we then had to face how we were going to cover any kind of outside care that we were getting. So one of the dilemmas is if you pay for um, outside care um, out of pocket and you do so on an informal basis, that is bringing in somebody that you know, you run the risk of having no kind of protection. So in other words, if that person decides they're going to steal from you or rip you off in some way, you really have no recourse because there's no legal protection for that. If you go through an agency, you end up paying quite a bit of money and very little of that money goes to the actual caregiver, but you do have protection because the agency has all kinds of legal um, uh, coverage. So that is one of the issues. Um, we ended up finally, because my husband needed so much care, I had to get him Medicaid eligible. So that's another uh, fairly complicated process that I'm not going to go into in great detail here because it requires um, you know, a lot of explanation about that. But essentially, I had to spend down all of his assets. So that leads me to the suggestion that if you are in that position, it really is a good idea to find a good elder care lawyer who can help you navigate the legal system. And I did find a good elder care lawyer, and I have to say that she uh, pulled my um, little burning toes out of the fire on more than one occasion. Um, and we had a fairly complicated, uh, fairly complicated set of circumstances um, after he was moved to a nursing home, and I had to move him from one state to another, and very, very set of um, issues. So she was extremely helpful and really went to bat for me on a number of occasions. So I would really recommend that your listeners understand the financial landscape and find a good elder care lawyer or somebody who can help, you know, figure these things out. It's, it's worth a lot. And there are ways to do that at the state level. So the State Office on Aging can make recommendations that can also provide a written information that can help you um, find guidance for some of these things. Hmm. So I already talked about the whole thing about bringing in outside help and when you have to figure out how to make that decision, uh, which is very difficult. I, uh, in my own personal journey, as I mentioned, I was working with a therapist who finally said to me one day, you know, if you do not get some additional help, uh, it's really going to take a toll on you. And I will say that the statistics on caregivers um, is very interesting because more caregivers die than care recipients, and they do so from the stress of caregiving, which is why when I talked about self-care before, it's really important. It's not just, a, oh, it's important to take care of yourself. It is really, really important to take care of yourself because if you go down, uh, the person you're caring for is going to go down too. So it, mm -hmm. it's very important. Um, if you get to the point where you have to make a decision about moving your loved one to a nursing home, you really must do your homework. And that means that you go to websites and you look at what your options are. You look at materials that are provided by the state. Um, you make visits, and you don't make a visit just once. You make a visit several times. You get recommendations from people in the community, again, from um, printed materials. You read reviews. You ask around. And then once you have moved your loved one to a nursing home, you must be vigilant. You must be present. You must show up, and you must show up every day because that is how your loved one is going to get good care. When I did finally have to move my husband to a nursing home, um, I was there every single day, and he got really good care. And I made a terrible mistake um, in that I moved my husband to a facility, uh, one facility which was a place that took care of younger people because he was just in his 60s when he was uh, diagnosed with MS. And this was a facility that took care of younger people. And I had researched it, and they had won awards for taking care of people with MS. But with this younger population, they also had a lot of people who had been shot up in gang violence and other kinds of things. And ultimately, they were understaffed and couldn't provide the kind of care I thought they could. And it was a disaster. And I was able to get him out of there, but he was there for seven months before I could find another place. So I learned wow. a very valuable wow. lesson from that. It was horrible. 
it was horrible. So then I looked and looked and looked, and I looked at 20 other facilities, and I finally found a much, much better place full of really old people, <laughs> but it was great. <laughs> I was trying to avoid really old people, but you know what? It turned out to be a really good place, and he was there every day, and I mean, I was there every day, and I still go back, and I visit people that he was friends with, and the staff greets me very warmly. So, And then the last thing I would say is practice self-care. And always, always should be, always should be emphasized, uh, Andrea. And let's just uh, leave off there while we take a wee further pause. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. So stay tuned, everyone. Did you know that your beliefs create your entire reality, but it's the subconscious beliefs that do most of the creating? Belief Shifter and Life Coach Shiraz can help you identify those limiting beliefs and eliminate them, often in a single session. Like it was almost instant, like I had relief right away. Creating better health, relationships, careers, and finances. Let Shiraz help you step out of safety and into awareness. Definitely something's happening. Uh, it's like a, a flow inside. Yeah, it feels good. Whether in person or online, Shiraz provides personal coaching, belief shifting. Visit Shiraz at energeticmagic.com or call 416 529 7429. Energetic Magic on the BBM Global Network, Tuesdays at 7 p.m. Eastern. Find your greater happiness. Be well, be aware, be magical. Master of words, powerful player. What life-changing words can Dr. Janet Smith-Warfield pull out of her magical toolbox that just might mysteriously open a door you never knew was there? A door to free yourself from fear forever. Transform your rage into right action. Release your guilt. Position you into a life of freedom, purpose, passion, power, and peace. All quite suddenly, unexpectedly, and almost miraculously, with no effort on your part. Join Dr. Janet every Monday at noon Eastern on Dancing with Words, Dancing with Wisdom. On the BBM Global Network, as she and her guests show you how words map our experiences. Immersing you in a sound bath that relaxes your muscles, opens your mind, and supports you in co-creating your extraordinary life. And you are still with us today, which is just terrific. This is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and regular listeners know how much I treasure your championship. You tune in faithfully every week, and I can actually say the same about the enthusiasm our guest has been demonstrating today, because Dr. Andrea Taylor has has been sharing so much about her, you know, sort of emotional and practical journey on a spousal caregiving journey. And I think this has been extremely important. So, Andrea, you also gave us very practical advice that you have learned along the way to cope with what I call uncopable systems. And I can see the listeners who take notes regularly scrawling with their pens across the pages. So I know you wanted to just give us some additional words of wisdom in that regard. So let's go there next. Okay. One last thing that I wanted to share in terms of the practical piece is about making plans for yourself long-term as a caregiver. Um, In my case, I was managing our house, uh, which was a three-bedroom ranch, and I was still working full-time. And I was also seeing my husband every day in the nursing home. I was also bringing him home on the weekends. And it was less and less viable for me to do that. And eventually, I was thinking about my own welfare long term. And I ended up making the decision that something had to go, and it was the house. So I sold our house and moved myself to a um, continuing care retirement community and downsized to a little one-bedroom cottage uh, where it just, was just me and the cat, 
and was no longer able to bring my husband home on the weekends, but I could bring him here for day visits. And it turned out to be one of the best decisions I ever made because he had a chance to see me in this community. Uh, and he did pass away about 10 months after I moved. And at that point, I was already moved, and he and I had done the downsizing together, and we had gone through the photographs, and we had made decisions about the furniture and all that kind of thing. And I didn't have to do it after he passed away. And I had made long-term plans for my own care and my own welfare, and I was very, very fortunate. It was a difficult decision for me. It was difficult for my son but it turned out to be a really good one. So sometimes making those kinds of plans in advance, even though you think you can't, is a good idea. So I just wanted so for, to share that. Very, very, very heart-wrenching. And we both agree that, you know, while we do this show and we're speaking in a level-headed fashion with folks, doesn't mean that this doesn't bring up things for for both of us, for, for the listeners just to be aware of, right? Because you are kind of remembering certain things. And so I'm sure in all of that process, you've also learned some things, Andrea, about yourself along the way, or maybe there are some additional words of wisdom that you can impart. You've been doing great about giving us so much generously, but is there anything else that we need to hear or learn? I would simply say that none of us think that we can do this in the beginning. You know, it, you sometimes are faced with what seems to be insurmountable obstacles. And it's just amazing to me how we can sort of reach down into the very depths of our souls and our beings and pull out the most amazing opportunities and strengths and capacities and skills. And you can navigate and negotiate and learn systems and be able to do it. And it's really about persistence and it's really about attitude. And I think it's uh, sometimes you lie in bed in the morning and say, gee, I don't think I can really get up today, but you can. And I would just encourage your listeners to have that attitude and know that they can put one foot in front of the other and do it. Mm -hmm. and, use, and use your networks and use, use the people around you and use all the resources that you can possibly muster. Indeed. You're, you know, you accessing the elder care lawyer, so important. We've been chatting about how people don't realize these things until they're in the throes of it, and then sometimes it almost feels too late. But your reminders also about even self-care, I know we repeat them tons, but 63% of caregivers have a higher death rate than their peers who don't carry such burdens. And so I think we can't emphasize that enough, to be perfectly honest with you. At the same time, though, uh, I love from your website, and that's where we're going next, that your homepage uh, speaks to motivational speaker Nito Kubain, and you, you use there his quotation, your present circumstances circumstances don't determine where you can go. They merely determine where you start. And I think that's a terrific one. So on that exactly. note, and Andrea, where can we find out more about you? Well, you can find out from my website, which is womansencore.com, and it's W-O-M-A-N-S encore.com. I have to say that having it singular was my husband's idea. He said, you're only really working with one woman at a time, so you should call it womansencore.com. Um, and you can also email me at andrea at womansencore.com. I respond to both. And, you know, I, and I also do, um, I coach people uh, via Skype and via telephone. So if anybody is interested in coaching, that's a really good way to, you know, get in touch with me either via email or via the website. Mm -hmm. That's really good. Happy. And I also provide, by the way, I do a, a coaching session sort of free of charge just to get a sense of what people's issues are, whether we're a good fit. I can offer resources to folks just, you know, to give people direction. So, uh, and I'm more than happy to do that. Mm -hmm. Very good, because uh, we actually have listeners that range as far away as Australia. Can you imagine, mm -hmm. Andrea? So yes. the, the benefit of technology is such that you can really work with people. And though we focused on a particular topic today, 
we know that you deal with mature women in any number of sectors. And I think that this is so powerful and needed. So what's your website name again? Just say it again. I will. It's womansencore.com, and that's W-O-M-A-N-S-E-N-C-O-R-E.com. Mm-hmm. I love, by the way, that your husband uh, helped you with also the downsizing and that he was involved in those decisions. That will have yes. ultimately, I think, made a tremendous difference. So, Andrea, stand by till we come to your thank you. And for the moment, this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We're on the BBM Global Network, Tune In Radio, iHeart Radio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapoulis strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Mike Zorick, a three-time California state champion in Greco-Roman wrestling at 114 pounds. Mike, blind since birth, was born in Hartford, Connecticut. He was a six-time national placer, including two seconds, two-thirds, and two-fourths. He also won the Veterans Folk Style Wrestling twice at 152 pounds. In all these tournaments, he was the only blind competitor. Nancy Zorick, a creative spirit whose talents have taken her to the stage and into galleries and exhibitions in several states. Her father, a commercial artist who shared his instruments with his daughter and helped her fine-tune her natural abilities, influenced her decision to follow in his footsteps. Ms. Zorick has enjoyed a fruitful career doing what she loves. Listen Saturday mornings at 12 Eastern for The Nancy and Mike Show for heartwarming stories and interesting talk on the BBM Global Network. And almost we're at the top of the hour anew. I'm Carol Ann Hamilton, your host. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. And this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. We have had the pleasure with us today of Dr. Andrea Taylor as she has shared so vividly her caregiving journey with her husband and I can't tell her enough how much I have appreciated this because Andrea you heard at the top you know at the start of this show how stunned I was by the magnitude of your you know MS caregiving journey and all of its facets and I must admit that I still am and now I think our esteemed audience also understands why because by your own declaration and interaction style with us I know that you value integrity, compassion, and kindness. And I know you also describe yourself as a mother, wife, friend, caregiver, coach, writer, teacher, volunteer. You are definitely all of these things. Yet, I wish to end on a note of what captivated me, even above and beyond our immediate topic. And it is the YouTube where you share across ages an intergenerational mentoring program, which you founded. And I loved viewing that video. You start with a quote that activism is your rent for being on the planet. And you have without a doubt lived that one in spades as you were jailed more than once before the age of 15 for your stand against segregation at the time. And I just say, wow, you have my attention and admiration and I highly recommend that everyone tuning in take a few minutes from their busy days just to witness you sharing as courageously as you do. 
because you embody your belief in legacy, and that includes bringing together often marginalized young people and older adults as part of your clear conviction. So, Andrea, thank you for inspiring me personally, and I can hardly wait for your next efforts to make the world a gentler and safer place. This spinning globe that we inhabit needs people like you. So with that said, uh, we have a little preview for next week, and that's my gleeful show on coping with uncopable siblings, and I can hardly wait to fulfill on constant requests from my coaching and workshop clients to provide tips and tools to deal with challenging brothers and sisters. We're also coming up to American Thanksgiving soon, so you may want to check out Andrea's Holidays and the Gray Divorce, 10 Tips for Navigating New Terrain, and it's under the Insights tab of her website to get a head start. So for now, uh, we're soon coming to a new decade. I always invite you into a confidential readiness session with me at copingwithuncopableparents.com or carolann at carolannhamilton.com because if you're truly ready for things to change in your elder care situation, I invite you to access somebody like Andrea or myself who have been there, done it, and gotten a t-shirt. Archives for this show are always at boldbravemedia.com forward slash shows forward slash the hyphen conscious hyphen caregiver under self-help or health. Either way, we have a lot of interesting plans underway for you as we head into the holiday season. For just today, always know you've been strong too long How about you dare to care with flair? We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasting, and Spotify. I'm your host, Carol Ann Hamilton, and this is the Conscious Caregiver Show. Until next week. You've been listening to The Conscious Caregiver with host Carol Ann Hamilton. For a fresh and unique approach to modern caregiving, listen to gain a weekly dose of inspiration and down-to-earth advice right here on The Conscious Caregiver with Carol Ann Hamilton. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.